Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the ECMWF, the GFS and ECMWF ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well. Now over the last few days we've been looking at the potential of seeing some quite stormy weather or if not even some quite cool weather coming in from the north and northwest, typical for this time of year as we do have the jet stream starting to power up with the polar vortex and stratosphere and the tropospheric polar vortex going, uh, or start, start, starting to sort gain power as we do increase the cold over the North Pole. We are also seeing though within the latest models the potential of building up a Scandinavian high at points which could be some encouraging signs for any wintry lovers out there it, um, for the upcoming winter um, as if we did see these Scandinavian highs continuing to build over the coming weeks and months it st could start to bring some colder air in as the air over sort of the northern hemisphere does cool down. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And do remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do run through the latest from the GFS, you can see at the moment we do have high pressure over the south of the UK. Quite deep low pressure over towards Iceland. You can bring in quite stormy weather there, um, very unsettled conditions. And that could encroach in the far northwest at times over the coming days. And we will be seeing weather fronts trying to push through. And we'll see that on the UK Nessus run at the end of the video. The high pressure to our south does eventually give way to low pressure coming in off the Atlantic, but we continually see this pressure build up to our east and the north as well, um, over towards uh, Russia and Scandinavia with this big blocking area of high pressure. Now, this isn't too unusual in the summer months, but we are heading now into the end of September, getting towards the start of October, and we're still seeing this blocking pattern potentially staying um, over Scandinavia. And if we did see this pattern continue throughout the winter, we could start to be drawing more colder air in towards Eastern Europe and towards Scandinavia, which does mean whenever we do get the synoptic pattern of easterly or northerly winds, it's that much colder. So it's an encouraging sign for winter, and we'll have to see how it does develop on the current models. So if we do have a look at the GFS in about a week's time, you can see we are starting to pull in a bit of a northerly wind, which would bring pretty chilly conditions if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures. You can see the zero degree ice gets through most of the country, if not minus five getting through into Scotland potentially. Quite a chilly outcome there, typical of, um, sort of the amplified jet stream we're seeing. And in the longer term, we continually bring in those sort of westerly winds. And on the GFS, because of the blocking we have over towards Europe and Scandinavia, um, combined with um, this ex-tropical system, if not hurricane out in the Atlantic, it does amplify the jet stream sufficiently that by the end of the run, we are actually pulling up southerly winds with some quite warm air seeping up northwards, and we could be seeing a sort of an Indian summer sort of pattern. Um, now, we are 384 hours away, of course, so it's not guaranteed by any means. But this sort of pattern would give temperatures into low 20s, potentially, which would classify as a bit of an Indian summer with warm temperatures into the middle or early um, to middle of October, so interesting designs there from the latest GFS. It's all to do with the application of the jet stream and how it interacts with this block we're seeing over towards Scandinavia and Eastern Europe into Russia at the moment. If we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. You can see over the coming days we do have high pressure in the south, low pressure in the north, of course. Weather fronts will be moving through over the coming days, and we do again see this battle between the jet stream that amplifies and this big blocking area of high pressure towards Scandinavia. This does um, in turn bring in southerly winds and we do see some quite warm temperatures potentially for a period of time but it does like weather fronts are going to be swinging through but we still have this Scandinavian high and if we do look at the pressure patterns right towards day 10 high pressure over Scandinavia low pressure out in the Atlantic and this would give sort of a battleground scenario with low pressure trying to push off the Atlantic high pressure trying to hold it off and as I said if we saw this in a couple months time these patterns of Scandinavian um, highs continuing to build we could be seeing something a little bit colder um, in from the east if we should see this pattern continue. So interesting signs from that as over the last few winters, last winter wasn't too bad, but um, winter of 1920, um, we didn't see really any Scandinavian highs build at all. We just had low pressure over Greenland and Scandinavia bringing in westerly winds. So this is an encouraging sign for early season wintry lovers um, and we'll have to keep an eye on what happens. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, um, you can see very similar to the other runs with westerly winds. Then we pull up that brief southerly wind with the 
high pressure trying to block out the low pressure, but it won't be a warm southerly wind as we do have low pressure pushing in off the Atlantic and it doesn't make it all the way through. And towards the end of the run, we do see that Scandinavian hive start to bring in an easterly wind. Now, the easterly wind isn't particularly cold, um, at least for the UK it isn't, but on the surface it probably will be a bit chilly. But you can see there is some cold rest swinging around into Scandinavia in parts of Eastern Europe. Now, give this a couple months and this air will be 5 10 15 degrees colder and that is where we could be seeing some very cold conditions for the uk if we did see this pattern take off so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens of course um but it's looking encouraging for sort of wintry synoptics as as we get closer to the winter months if these synoptics continue coming out in the models it's going to be exciting uh, to say the least um uh for uh sort of winter 2020 2021 or sorry 2021 2022 sorry i get my years muddled up um can't believe it's uh be 2022 next year so if we do have a look at the ecmwf ensembles which will show this scandinavian blocking and the general northern blocking very very well if we go out to day seven it's 168 hours you can see we still have this blocking around we've got low pressure out in the atlantic and to the to the west Pulling in the potential for south or southwesterly winds, so reasonably mild at times, but with that low pressure pushing in, we could be seeing unsettled conditions, of course. But all the ensembles have this high pressure towards Scandinavia, potentially getting up towards Greenland within some of the uh, ensemble members. And this amplification will be very interesting if we do see this continue into the summer, uh, into the winter months. Um, as I said, could be bringing in colder conditions. If we go to day 10, 240 hours, you can see the amount of northern blocking we are seeing with a massive amount of red on these ensemble charts and the immense amount of northern blocking. Now, of course, northern blocking isn't too unusual in summery months, but the more we head into October, November, the more unusual it does get. As remember, the polar vortex um, at, eight, at 10 HPA, which really powers and is one of the driving factors into the strength of the jet stream throughout autumn and winter, it's getting very strong at the moment, and it's going to peak its um, sort of peak intensity at, at uh, 10 HPA, generally normally around sort of early December time. So it's really ramping up at the moment. And it's surprising seeing this amount of blocking around, which is going to, of course, make quite static weather patterns when usually we would be seeing a lot of low pressure coming in, westerly winds. So, yeah, very interesting to see what's happened with this. If we go right towards the end of the run, you can see still a lot of northern blocking around um, probably an unreasonable amount of northern blocking probably wouldn't happen like this in exact this sort of scenario but does show you the amount of sort of static weather there is out there and how we need to keep an eye on this as we head through the next few weeks and the next few months as we head to winter now if we have a look at the gfs ensembles if we have a look at the 6z run for london you can see over the next sort of week or so or at least five six days temperatures are going to be around average if not quite a bit above average by a good maybe three four five degrees we can continually see decent days where temperatures get into the low 20s especially in the south and the southeast minimal precipitation however towards the end of this working week um, into the weekends and early next working week that's when we could start to see more showers and precipitation come and it, again it all depends on how progressive the weather fronts um, that are coming in from the northwest are as it does look like we're going to be seeing rain in the northwest of scotland just unsure how far south and, and how far east they do go you can see around the 27th 28th we've been seeing this quite a lot of a drop in temperatures northwesterly if not northerly winds moving in with quite cold air mass not quite as cold as we were seeing a couple of days ago but still a reasonably cold air mass with temperatures a good few degrees below average if not getting down to zero degrees at 850 hpa which could give the potential of an overnight frost here or there especially in the north and in sheltered glens of scotland but generally in the longer term it does look like unsettled conditions and generally it does look like temperatures will be around or below average with some going even quite pretty chilly towards the end of the run so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that if we do have a look at what's is happening in glasgow to give us an idea of what's going to be happening in the north of the british isles you can see in the next four or five days we can see temperatures a little bit up and down typical of a westerly pattern precipitation is going to be quite frequent and is going to only increase in frequency over the next week or so and then it doesn't look like it's going to be very unsettled all the way until early october with temperatures below um, or around or if not quite 
far below average at times with temperatures around 0 degrees 850 HPA, which is pretty chilly. And again, as I said, could bring a few wintry showers here or there over the peaks of uh, the northern hills and over Scot Scottish hills as well, Scottish mountains, and could bring an overnight frost to more widespread areas, uh, potentially if we get the right conditions. If we do now, lastly, have a look at the UK Met Office run, see what that shows. Over the coming five days, just to give us an idea of what we could be seeing shorter term. You can see at the moment, reasonably dry. Um, as you can see uh, this evening, we do have some potentially patchy showers moving to the northwest, but nothing too much. But by tomorrow morning, we have weather fronts moving in, which could give some heavier rain in the northwest. You can see it is fizzling away as it heads southwards and southeastwards, and then has some heavier showers in behind it for Scotland. But generally, most areas are reasonably dry. Scotland seeing the bulk of the rain. Still, Ireland, Northern Ireland can see some rain as well, and potentially Northern England as well. But generally, it does look like the north and the west is going to be getting the bulk of the rain. Still, showers around, as you can see, in the far southeast, and an approaching weather front in from the west. Could be a score line within that. You can see this yellow colour here, um, essentially a score line. But again, we'll have to keep an eye on that um, towards the shorter range in maybe a few days' time. If we do have a look at the max temperatures, which are going to be reasonable over the next few days, you can see this afternoon we've got sort of temperatures getting up to around 20, maybe 21 degrees in a few spots, feeling really pleasant. By tomorrow, you can see chilly overnight, um, but by tomorrow afternoon, you can be seeing once again 20, 21 degrees, but for the far north and the far northwest, struggling into low um, teens, maybe 12, 13 degrees, potentially, if not colder, over the mountains. As we head through to Thursday, you can see temperatures maybe peaking around 21, 22 degrees. Uh, and again, once again, cold in the north. By f um, and by Friday, temperatures again, 23 degrees, potentially feeling really quite warm in the sort of Midlands area. But of course, it all depends on cloud amounts and we'll be seeing any showers crop up. Saturday, once again, very warm, 21, 22 degrees. Very warm for this time of year. And then by the time we get to Sunday, it doesn't look like that weather front is sweeping by. And you can see the strong temperature contrast, maybe 16, 17 degrees in the Irish Sea. Whereas just as in the North Atlantic, maybe 12 or 13 degrees showing you the air mass is shifting. Uh, and that's what we've got to keep an eye on um, in the next sort of five or six days. So that air mass will eventually come in through that polar maritime air mass, bringing in much chillier conditions. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you go out and enjoy um, the warmer weather, especially in England and Wales over the coming uh, days, as it does look like it's going to be coming colder from this weekend into early next week. But I'll see you again for another video soon.